All right, here's an addendum to the free, uh, previous three videos. It has to do with the toggle buttons. Uh, the toggle button in the previous video, nothing changed when you hit it. It was remembering that it was toggling plus and minus or zero and one, uh, but it wasn't displaying anything on the screen. I've changed that, and this is slightly different. The colors are a little bit different. If you hit the toggle button now, you see the, ch the color changes, which is what you want for a toggle button. And you can see in the background, it's indicating that it's going from one state to the other. How did I do this? Well, basically, I made a second CSS provider. And the second CSS provider is the darker colors. And when you click on the toggle button, if the button is pushed, it sets the button to those darker colors. If not, it sets it to the lighter colors. It's very simple. In order to do it, I moved the CSS provider declarations, uh, make them global so that they're going to be visible uh, to all the subroutines, although in reality only two of them I'm using. But um, the original one was CSTBTN1. That was the provider for the toggle button. I've added a second one, TBTN1A, a second provider for the toggle button. Now, if we get down to the code, everything is pretty much the same until we get down here to the uh, getting the pointers to the providers. Uh, there was the original one, um, uh, TBTN1, and here's another one, TBTN1A. So we added one line. It's the same, basically the same line. Now, down here where I created the uh, the provider, there's the original one, TBTN1. Now I changed this line here from royal blue to light blue. Okay, so this is the unpushed lighter color, all right? And that's the one that gets established for the toggle button. The toggle button is established with that lighter color. The, the CSS set sets the uh, CSS uh, for the button uh, to this lighter color. Then I create the a darker color for TBTN1A, the other one, and it's royal blue. I do not set the button to this one. The button's already been set to the lighter color. All right, down here at the end, where I had the actual function that handles the toggle, uh, we determined uh, before, and we still do, whether or not it's pushed. If T comes back true, or 1, it's pushed. If it comes back 0, it's not pushed. Okay, so if it's pushed, what I do is I do a CSS set on the button, which came down as a toggle button, so I have to cast it back as a widget because this function is looking for widgets. You do this a lot. Um, so the button, which is the toggle button, is cast into a widget, and I am, a, I am setting the CSS to come from TBTN1A, which is the darker set of colors. Otherwise, if it was not pushed, I set it to the lighter set of colors, the original. Then we have this one here. Um, when you did it before, this was before you did a show windows or show all up above, before the windows became active. So the windows all painted at the same time. Now you need to tell the window manager or tell GTK, whoever's handling it, um, that it needs to repaint this widget because this widget has changed. So GTK widget draw, Q draw, causes the system to repaint this widget with the new colors. So you'd, if you don't have this, the colors will show up whenever it feels like it, whenever it thinks it's necessary to redraw the window and, or redraw the button, which could be a long time. This way, of course, it does it right away. So those are the only two changes in that I've added a new set of colors. And I, in, in the button handling down here, I uh, set the colors as appropriate to whether or not the button's pushed or not pushed. The only other one, and I'll go back here and show it again. Um, the only other thing here is, um, is that on the regular buttons, uh, there's no activity either. Now, a lot of times there'll be a flash of the regular button. And it is possible, there's the toggle button, that's kind of visible. It is possible to set up a second set of colors and set up a timer so that if you click it uh, after, say, a tenth of a second, um, you, you click it, it down in the routine, it changes the color. And then about a tenth of a second later, it changes the color back. That's going to take some coordination between how you, how you tell the timer which button needs to be uh, reset back to its original. That can be done with a bunch of flags. Uh, so if you uh, where the timer then goes through and looks at the flags of which buttons need to be repainted or repaint them all, it's not really going to grind the machine to a halt. But um, so there's there's no particular activity. But this is a consequence of going in and altering the CSS. There may be a way of doing it to preserve the original GTK, 
uh, animation. I don't know what it is. Um, somebody might be able to find it. Um, I don't know what it. Like I said, I don't know what it is. But you can you can simulate the same activity. So I thought I'd fill that in because people and this would be true of any other button where you where you want an activity to be visible. Um, this it does would not apply to the check buttons because those are automatically. Um, of course, we're not actually alter anything here, but we could put a button next to them or something like that. But in any event, um, they're they're automatically taken care of.